Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Cursive and welcome back to another video. Today we are here to do a deck profile. This is my very first uh, personal deck profile. So hopefully I can uh, do this all correctly for you guys and it's going to turn out, well, I mean, you know, all nice and stuff. But anyway, I'm here with my second place relinquished deck profile. Over this past weekend on Sunday, I took part in a Justice Tournament. Um, yeah, it was an all-in-one-day tournament, and I went in with this deck, and I actually managed to go 4-0 and in Swiss, and overall get second place in the tournament. I will have all of Justice's um, information linked down below. I'll have his Twitch channel, his YouTube channel, where you should have a breakdown for the tournament uploaded uh, if it isn't already soon. So you guys can go ahead and check that out. But regardless, let's get into this deck profile here. So, for starters, obviously we have the skill card for the deck. We have none other than the Thousand Eyes Spell Pegasus skill. So obviously Thousand Eyes Spell is one of the new skills from the Match of the Millennium starter deck that recently came out. And it is basically the only viable, the only skill that you're going to want to use for the Relinquished deck. It basically makes it so you no longer require any ritual spell cards. This skill is your ritual spell, and it also gives you access into Restrict without any polymerizations. It lets you go into Restrict and Relinquish as many times as you can possibly go. You have three Relinquish, you can summon all of them if you can recur them, you can summon them again. You can summon an infinite number of Relinquish as long as you have the Relinquish and the resources available with this skill. It's a fantastic card, it's 100% necessary, and yeah, this is your skill card. So next up here, we're going to go into the monsters. Obviously, to start things off, we're going to have three copies of the boy himself. We have three copies of Relinquished. So Relinquished is overall a really, really powerful card. Being able to stuck up your opponent's monsters if they try to beat over him. He doesn't die, the monster he's equipped with dies, and your opponent will also take equal damage. Because Thousand Eye Spell doesn't let you attack directly, and backward removal is so prevalent in this format, you normally want to summon Relinquish in defense position on that first turn, and obviously go for the suck. Um, overall, this card's amazing. Uh, being able to easily get through things like Moth, like Gap, or really any problematic card your opponent has. It's also great to just be able to suck up Zoma, as this card can suck up Zoma fine. It's uh, overall an amazing monster. It puts in amazing work. It offers a lot of power and easy outs. And because of that suck ability, the resources you have to spend aren't the end of the world as you can easily out and get rid of your opponent's resources as well. Next up, we have another really important monster in the deck. We have three copies of Nudoria. So Nudoria obviously isn't a uh, relinquished monster specifically, but it is a, another dark monster for the deck, and it's another normal summon for the deck. This deck doesn't have many normal summons as most of its monsters are just support monsters for Relinquished. The only real normal summon you have is Senju. Obviously Senju isn't enough, only having such a small amount of normal summons you need other cards when you are forced to go first. Nudoria is that card. If it's run over, you get to pop a monster so it allows you to keep up your advantage. It's a 1200 body, can do some poking in late game when you wiped out a lot of your opponent's cards. And overall, its ability to keep your advantage and it being a very, very powerful normal summon makes it an essential card in this deck. Other people might think, what about Maneater? What about uh, Old Vindictive? The reason that Nudoria, in my opinion, is better is because of that 1200 body. A little bit of extra attack can be very, very important for the uh, Relinquished deck. Also, you need to run a dark monster as we do have some dark support in this deck. Next up, we have my favorite card, the boy himself. We have three copies of Sphere Karibo. So Sphere Karibo is an absolutely amazing card and is absolutely essential. Like I said, there is so much back row removal in the game currently, and because of that, being able to stop attacks with Sphere Karibo is basically mandatory. You have to deal with things like Twister and things like Night Beam and Dust Tornado. It makes cards like that of Windstorm or Security Orb or uh, Nightmare Wheel or Zoma not as powerful as what Sphere Karibo is as it's a hand trap and unless your opponent is discarding 
they have no way to get rid of that Spirit Creeper. Specifically, even if they are discarding cards from your hand, under normal circumstances it's going to be a random discard. Because of this, Spirit Creeper is absolutely essential at 3. Not only does it give you protection for Relinquished, but it's also the main card that helps you out in those moth matchups. And Sphere Karibo is the main reason why Relinquished has a good moth matchup. They summon moth, while you, 9 chances out of 10, have the ability to stop it, summon Relinquished, and then go in next turn. That's why Sphere Karibo is such an essential card. Along with that, Dark. Next up, we have the reason that I think my deck was able to go 4 0 in Swiss and almost take the tournament. We have Illusionist Faceless Magician. So Illusionist Faceless Magician is one of the brand new Relinquish support cards that came out in Match of the Millennia. And this card is absolutely amazing. If Relinquished or Thousand Eyes Restrict is destroyed by battle or card effect, Illusionist can be summoned from Grave or from Hand. If Relinquished or Thousand Eyes Restrict is just sent from the field to the graveyard, or sorry, if Illusion is Faceless Mage is sent from the field to the graveyard, then you can summon out Relinquish or Thousand Eyes Restrict. And both of these effects are once per turn, not just one of them being once per turn. So you can, you basically get three monsters, three different protections off of this single monster, which is absolutely phenomenal. This card puts your opponent in a lock that is basically only outed by DD Crow or a possess dark soul take and then tribute over your monster as illusionist does state the monster has to be in your control when it leaves the field so you can take illusionist and tribute it but besides those two ways this basically sets up a infinite lock on your opponent that most decks for a lot of decks it actually is an infinite lock and they do not have a way to out it very very powerful it is the reason this deck is as good as it currently is and this card is to need it at at least a two of maybe a three of next up we have some more ritual support here we have Jin here obviously we are running the good Jin, not the bad Jin, because well this one gives you protection from draft cards and i think the other one just lets you discard if you attack but like how often you're actually attacking with relinquished isn't super often and this is the better one with stall being so prevalent with trap cards being so prevalent like that of spellbinding circle and nightmare wheel they can target your relinquished sure but they're not going to be able to do anything to him if he was summoned with Jin. along with that Jin is easy discard fodder for relinquished for the summon off a thousand eye spell and if you do have another card available you can immediately discard Jin and then banish Jin all for the Thousand Eyes spell cost, which makes him absolutely fantastic. Next up, we have the next normal summon in the deck. The only other normal summon in the deck, we have two copies of Senju of the Ten Thousand Hands. So Senju is obviously your easy plus one. You summon him, you search out Relinquished, and you're normally in a good position. You actually don't want to summon Senju all the time, especially in that Moth matchup. Normally you actually tend to set Senju and not go for the search effect, uh, as summoning Senju puts you in a situation where they can parasite you. Now obviously if you have the Sphere Creepers in hand or the Nightmare Reveal set and you feel that you have enough protection to allow them to pop their skill, feel free to summon Senju and let them attempt to go in on you because as long as you have the protection, you should be fine. Senju being that plus one, and this deck using so many resources for its summons, this plus one is basically essential, and Senju is essential. So next up, we have my little tech cards here. The first tech card we have is one copy of Sinister Serpent. As you guys know by now, this deck does a lot of discarding. Sinister Serpent is a card that you discard that recurs itself in the following turn. So you basically don't spend any resources if Sinister Serpent is your discard and you have a banished target in Grave, which is absolutely phenomenal being able to get at your Relinquished for no resources. Along with that, going up against Burn is a really, really hard matchup for Relinquished. If you have Sinister Serpent and your opponent is attempting to discard cards from your hand, 
with their uh, twisted personality and they hit Sinister Serpent, you will recur it during your turn. It makes their skill a little bit weaker and keeps discard fodder for your Thousand Eyes spell, which gives this deck a better matchup against the burn decks. And here's the other spicy tech, the last card for the monster section of the deck, we have one copy of Gravekeeper's Curse. This may seem a little bit weird at first glance, but I found in a lot of my burn matchups while playtesting, I was in a situation where I needed just that little bit more burn damage. I didn't have any time to go ahead and just throw myself a uh, nightmare wheel for the burn damage. I need that instantaneous burn. Lava Golem would have worked as it would have basically done instantaneous during their turn, but I wanted another alternative. Gravekeeper's Curse was that alternative. What makes Gravekeeper's Curse a little bit better is that once again it's a dark monster, and it's a dark monster with less than 1500 attack, like all the dark monsters in this deck actually, which will become very, very prevalent, re prevalent later on. So that's it for the monster cards. Now we go ahead and move on to the spell cards, which there is not very many of. First off, we run two copies of Double Cyclone. So Double Cyclone is a card that has seen a lot of play in Relinquished uh, basically all the time. This card offers you a quick play pop, and you can pop one of your own cards to do it, which is actually really, really powerful in Relinquished because if you have a card that's been, that you sucked up from your opponent, and you don't need it anymore, or they have another suck target for your Relinquished, you pop that card, you pop one of your opponent's back row, and you're basically just getting two pops out of a double Cyclone instead of one, which is absolutely amazing. Makes this card fantastic and Relinquished, and I think it's 100% a 2 of. Next, we have another new card here that supports Relinquished really, really well. We have two copies of Dark Eruption. So a lot of people would probably opt to play Allure of Darkness here, which I do understand why, but I think Dark Eruption is honestly better as you can summon your Relinquished multiple times, so being able to recur it with Dark Eruption can be very, very prevalent. Along with that, like I mentioned before, Gravekeeper's Curse is a Dark Eruption target. So if you burned through Gravekeeper's Curse earlier and he's in Grave, well you can Dark Eruption, bring him back, summon it, do 500 more burn. This can be very good as if you're at the end where you do need that little bit more burn and you are top decking, drawing a Dark Eruption with Curse and Grave is basically game. So that's gonna go ahead and clue it up for the spells. Like I said, not very many spells in this deck and also not very many trap cards in this deck. For a trap lineup, we basically have the best traps in the game currently, just the staples that we need, that being two copies of Nightmare Wheel. This card is obviously a easy burn card, targets a monster, they can't attack. It's basically just more protection for that moth matchup as you do need phase to stop your opponent's moth. And same thing with this guy here, two copies of Zoma, absolutely fantastic in the moth matchup. I used it multiple times in the moth matchup. Uh, it's easy tribute fodder if you want to go into your relinquish and he's just sitting on the field and you don't need him. He's also good to just crash into your opponent's monsters, make them take damage, or take a defensive approach, or force your opponent to use back removal so they don't use it to remove your suck targets with Relinquished later on. Overall, Zoma is absolutely amazing, so is Nightmare Wheel. Definitely need both these cards. So that's going to go ahead and clue it up for the main deck. Now we're going to go ahead and jump into our extra deck here, which does actually have relevance in this deck. So first off, we have three copies of the man himself, the boy, Thousand Eyes Restrict. So, obviously, we didn't see any Waking the Dragon, so this is the only card that we can go into in the extra deck, but we can actually go into it three times, technically. You might be like, well, you didn't see Thousand Eyes Idol in the main deck, but I do have him in the side, as Restrict is a fantastic card against Moth. Reason being, this deck has a 25 card deck. Most Moth decks run a Lure of Darkness right now, or they are less than 25 cards. If, they'd have, if they have already popped their skills main effect to go ahead and tribute off a monster and summon Moth, dropping Restrict on them usually auto wins you the duel. Not many decks have ways to out Restrict. Not many of them are running Offerings. Not many of them are running 
um, possess Dark Soul. And even if they do possess Dark Soul, if they can't tribute off Restrict that turn, taking him does nothing. Because when you summon Restrict, you don't suck. You do not suck at all. You sit on Restrict, and you just wait for your opponent to deck out. You have back row removal, you get rid of your opponent's uh, trap cards if they're targeting him with Nightmare Wheel or whatever, and you just sit on Restrict and wait for the deck out. Restrict is absolutely fantastic in the Moth matchup, and is a 3 of because we can go into him three times, but you probably never will, but just in case. Next off, we just have the Fun, the Flex. We just have Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, Arcana Knight Joker, and Ryu Senshi. We can't access any of these cards, but they're just chilling here because they're the foil extra deck cards that I wanted to buy. So yeah, they're chill. So that will go ahead and round off our extra deck here, and now we will go into the side deck. So as I mentioned to you guys before, we have one copy of Thousand Eyes Idol in the side deck. It gives us access to Thousand Eyes Restrict for that moth matchup. The next card we have in the side deck is Lava Golem. Lava Golem is a great card for the Moth matchup, a decent card for the Gaia matchup. If you're sitting on Lava Golem plus Restrict, you're in a fantastic position and your opponent is basically just going to slowly, slowly die. Lava Golem is an amazing card and I think he's needed in the side deck of almost every single deck. Next off, we have all trap cards for the remaining portion of our extra deck. First thing first, we have one copy of Trap Jammer. The reason I use Trap Jammer in the side deck is because it's basically the only negation spell, the only negation trap, sorry, that doesn't have a hard requirement on it. It doesn't require you to discard, it doesn't require you to control a normal monster, just it can only be activated during the battle phase, but that really isn't a issue. As most people playing things like Zoma, like Nightmare Wheel, activate these cards on attack declaration because of that trap damage just stops them and you're chilling next off we have one copy of blast held by a tribute just a way to take out those tribute summon monsters that your opponent may control then we have one floodgate trap hole basically for possessed dark soul or for the moth matchup so they can't drop a double moth on you and one copy of wild tornado obviously a good pop target for your double cyclone and back or removal against the burn matchup. So this is the relinquished deck profile. I did get second place in Justice Terminal with this deck. And like I said, all of Justice social links are down below, or at least all the ones that I know. Go check them out, and I'll catch you guys all tomorrow for another video. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and yeah. Anyway, that's a wrap, guys. Peace.